Hey guys, welcome to this very special episode of Ask Roman. And as you can see, I'm gonna answer some of your questions about what type of gear we use. And in fact, this is my most favorite camera that we use. You know what, I'm gonna wait to the end to show you this one because it's very special and it's really changed the business. But let's start with this. Once upon a time, I was a TV reporter and I had an old news director who used to have a saying and she was absolutely right. She said, Roman, you can have the best story in the world, but if it's not done by five, you've got shh, and you can figure out what the rest is. And basically she was saying, the news comes on at five, and if the story's not ready by five, then you've got no story. And that's kind of a guiding principle here at TFL. We really work hard to bring you the cars first and to bring them to you in a timely and efficient manner. In order to do that, we have to be very efficient with our gear. So let's start right away with the main camera that we use, and that's this one. Now this is the Sony AX33. It's a prosumer video camera. And the reason we use it is because, well, it's easy to use. All you have to do is open it up, and it comes to life. Check it out. And yes, we use more sophisticated cameras. Let me turn this guy on. There you go, now you can see what I'm seeing. That's a Lumix GH4, it's a DSLR. We use those cameras as well when we want a little bit higher production quality. That camera that you're looking at right now gives you a much nicer depth of field. There's a sense of, well, 3D-ness almost to this image that the video camera doesn't have. This kind of renders a very flat image, but it is very simple to use. It is bulletproof. There's not a lot of settings that have to be done here. And we keep a bunch of these because they use interchangeable batteries, so if I don't have a battery that's working, perhaps Ian, who's working back there, our videographer, may have it. So we're always available to have a video camera to use when we need to shoot. The other thing this does is, I don't know if you can see this, maybe over here, you see that? It's got a stabilized lens so that when we're moving around the car, we don't have to necessarily be perfectly and utterly steady. The stabilized lens takes care of that. Now, this camera is really good for capturing video, but it's horrible in this state for actually capturing audio. So this is a must for any video production, and that is a decent boom mic. Now, this is a Sony that's actually meant to be paired with this camera. It attaches very simply, and uh, now we're getting good sound, and now we've got really the two basic ingredients of what it takes to produce a video. We've got the video and we've got the sound. And either of these, when they're missing, you can't use a video. And that's the thing about video production, it's not much different than like print reporting, except that you're juggling a lot more balls. You have to get your light right, you have to get your sound right, you have to get your equipment right. And this camera helps us do that. The other thing I like about this camera is that it's small and relatively easy to use. So the smallness comes in handy when I travel a lot. I don't have to have a lot of big gear to bring with me that potentially is just big for the sake of being big. Yeah, I do get a little jealous at the car shows when the guys have those old or giant video cameras, but you know what? 99% of the time this does the same thing that those big cameras do. The only time that it falls short is in low light situations and for the most part we don't shoot at night so that's not an issue. The little uh, sensor in here isn't grand when you're in a low light situation. So let's keep going. The next piece of equipment that we of course use and that are critical are these little cameras. Now, of course, you know what this is. This is a GoPro. This is the Sony version of that. It's an action cam. And um, I don't like the GoPros because of two reasons. Uh, the operating system they use is convoluted. And perhaps more importantly, you have to put them in a little container like this in order to use them so that you can't get sound. The Sony's, and by the way, you see 4K there? 4K, everything we shoot, actually we shoot in 4K, but we don't use 4K. We use, uh, we tried to use it a couple, about a year ago, two years ago. Um, it creates giant files. It's really a pain to edit. Uh, and the other problem with it is uh, the people that were watching it, you guys didn't necessarily think that it was necessary. So as much as we'd love to use 4K, it just creates a lot more video um, in terms of bandwidth that is much harder to move around. So we shoot everything at a higher frame rate. We shoot everything at 59, so it's a little bit sharper. Plus it allows us to slow things down when we're capturing action. But anyway, getting back to these. This also has a convoluted operating system. The upside to this is it's relatively waterproof without having to have it in a case so that 
it's another bit of equipment I don't have to carry. And then you can also use the stereoscopic mic that's on the front to actually capture audio. It's not grand, it works. The other downside with these is that you have a, to have a specific mount, a GoPro mount, to actually mount these on a car. With the Sonys, they've got a traditional tripod mount. We use this Gecko mount, which is wonderful because when you put the camera on, let me put that on here just very quickly, it does something that the GoPro can't do, and that is you can stick it on a surface and then check this out. You can rotate it in any direction that you may want to rotate at. With this, it only goes on one direction because of the way that the mount works, so I couldn't put it on this side of the computer. Uh, and that's why we use the Sonys. Uh, do I love them? No. Are they expensive? You know, we run over a lot of cameras. I, probably the best one that we've ever done is um, I had this on a heavy-duty truck and it fell off and I really wanted the video. I didn't really care about the camera that much. Like I say, they're pretty disposable, but I wanted the video because I needed to put together the review. So I actually drove back down the highway and the camera had fallen off and it was laying on the highway like this. And the video came back with all these trucks, hundreds of trucks and cars that had gone over it and not driven over it. So it was pretty cool. But yes, we had some end trucks run over these, we've had Jeeps run over them, we just go through them, part of the cost of doing business. Now, the next bit of equipment that we use, which um, is crucial, is of course microphones. This is a, a actually this is supposed to be a Rode mic, but we bought it and it turned out that it was a knockoff. Um, sometimes that happens. It works pretty well, but having a, a mic that captures sound, especially one with the dead cat on it, is hugely important. We're outside most of the time, and wind noise, uh, especially here in Colorado, because we get really fast winds. We have these Chinook winds that come down at like 50 miles an hour, uh, is really a struggle. And so a dead cat helps that. If you have a 60 mile an hour wind, no dead cat in the world will help it. Right, you know what that is, right? It's a little cover that goes on the microphone that keeps the wind noise. Um, and of course, we use uh, lavalier mics. Once again, Sony products, uh, I'm not in love with these. Uh, they tend to get interference, they tend to run the batteries down very quickly, and they tend to be expensive. These guys are like uh, $600 a pop, and as you can tell, um, these cords tend to break. Uh, they're problematic, uh, but having good sound is crucial to good video production, so we spend a lot of money on, on different kinds of microphones. Now, this is perhaps our most important tool, and it's a tool that many filmmakers use, but many novices don't, and that's a tripod. I believe that all great video starts with a steady shot. And if every shot you take ends up being like this all the time, I just get really, actually let me turn the camera on. So if every shot you take ends up being like this all the time, I end up just getting really seasick. I know it's really popular right now to vlog and it's very personal because I'm really talking to you here. Uh, but you know what, if you don't have to do this, if you can actually do that and get a nice steady shot, I think it makes for a higher production value. Now what is production value? Production value is of course how much money and effort you put into the actual art of video making. And so with a tripod, it's kind of the basic level of decent production. And of course with a tripod, you not only can do a steady shot, but you can also rotate, you can pan, you can go up and down and keep everything looking like it's professional quality. Uh, another favorite tool that we used to use a lot is this. This is a slider uh, and we use these little Manfrotto um, I don't know what these things are called. They're little like uh, uh, attachments. Anyway, they just snap on and that way you don't have to worry about having to screw it on every time. And, and a slider gives um, that shot that makes it look like it's kind of got that restaurant sheen on it. So what happens is you can put the camera on and slowly move it across. You'll see this a lot with high-end production videos where um, people are trying to give it that really professional look. The problem with a tripod, of course, and the slider is that they're big and they're heavy and taking them around, especially to auto shows and first drive reviews, just adds a lot of gear. So this is where my favorite new camera comes in, finally I know, and it's this right here. It's called the Osmo. Uh, and basically this is a stabilized camera that for, I think this one was $700, replaces what used to be a $10,000 Steadicam. You had to have this whole outfit that you would put on and attach a camera to and then you would spend hours trying to weigh it just right. And what this does is it does that quite simply by putting um, a stabilized camera on top of a stick. And where this came from, of course, is right here, which is also another favorite and that is a drone. Now drones, of course, we've been using now for five years. My son Tommy and I used to fly 
RC airplanes, so flying drones came natural to us. Um, the flying itself has never been the hard part. It's actually the easiest part of this. It's just, this is a relatively big piece of equipment. It needs to be put together. It needs to talk to your phone, yada, yada, yada. It just takes a long time to get this set up. And I know that sometimes maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes may not seem like a long time, but uh, when you have to take this on a plane where you're not supposed to have RC stuff on, when you bring it on board, and you have to tell them that it's not a bomb, but it's in fact a drone, and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, it gets to be a big piece of equipment. But the little stabilized camera came from basically the drone and was put on the Osmo so that now, especially at car shows, we have that very steady shot that uh, used to cost $10,000. And this is the mount that holds the Osmo to the car. This is one of our favorite shots. We put this mount on the back of the car not the car that we're filming, but the chase car. We attach the Osmo to it, and then one of our videographers sits in the back seat and actually control the Osmo with their phone, and we follow that chase car, usually me, as I'm doing my commentary, and then the photographer can actually move this up and down and left and right, and it gives you a really nice steady shot. It gives you those beautiful, almost, uh, well, almost professional Hollywood-like shots. Uh, and if you were to add the cost up, of all this equipment. I think these are about $900. Osmos are about, well, they were $700 when we bought them. They're probably cheaper now. Um, this is, depending which one you get, the 4K one's probably about $400. Um, Lavalier mics are $600. I think this one is $250. Um, Osmo is, well, you know that. The, the drone is probably, uh, I think they're about $1,000 to $1,400. This is a carbon fiber tripod, so it's a little more expensive. But you've got several thousand dollars worth of equipment here, but with this equipment, you can replicate pretty much what a professional video company would use for a tenth of the cost of their camera. And that's what makes our job possible. And that is that, that we, with this equipment and with a computer and internet connection, can produce what I think is a professional and informative and relatively well produced with you know a, a good amount of production value car review in a very short amount of time so anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video once again if you have any questions for me please put them down below and uh, thanks for watching and remember coming up next week nathan and i are going to be at the chicago auto show uh, so we're going to have a lot of truck information because the Chicago show is a big truck show. So look for, we know Nissan's unveiling something new. Uh, there'll be other unveilings, I'm sure. And then during the week, Andre's running the Ike Gauntlet. So if you're a fan of our towing tests, we're going to have a lot more coming your way. And be sure to subscribe to TFL Truck over here below if you want to... Um, be part of our whole truck world and click over here to watch what happens when I actually race that Raptor against the old one. See you guys next time. Ciao.